Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. We all love to hear success stories about people who pull themselves up by their bootstraps. It's the epitome of the American dream. But research here in Charlotte shows those born into low-income families have a slim chance of making it to the top. Carolina Impact's Danielle Koser shows us how a special task force hopes to change that. One by one, cars make their way down Mallard Creek Road. On the other side of the fence, eight-year-old Jamari Alexander doesn't seem to notice. Crouched down in the grass, he's off in his own little world, digging for gold. Cause I want to get some money. No sign of treasure here, but if he ever strikes it rich, the first thing he'll do... Buy stuff for my family. He's helpful, he's caring, and it melts me. Yolanda Alexander says her son's bright smile keeps her going through even the darkest of days. Born into poverty, she grew up in Section 8 housing in South Charlotte. Now she hopes for a different path for her son. I want him to grow up and have financial stability. I want him to learn how to manage money. Alexander, a single mom of two, works full time and lives paycheck to paycheck, relying on government assistance to help pay rent at this Northeast Charlotte townhouse. I don't want to receive assistance forever for everything. I want to be able to take care of myself. It's a goal she says some days seems impossible to reach as she struggles to balance the car payment with the cost of childcare. It gets frustrating to try to figure out where the money goes. Unfortunately for Alexander and thousands of other low-income families living in Charlotte, the chances of climbing out of poverty are slim. Out of the nation's 50 largest cities, researchers at Harvard and Berkeley rank Charlotte dead last for upward mobility. Many children born into low-income families in the Queen City are less likely to move up the economic ladder. According to researchers, children born into the bottom 5th percent of households here only have a 4.4 percent chance of ever reaching the top fifth. If you look at Charlotte and think about all of the jobs that have been created here, and think about the people who move here, um, the companies who are moving headquarters and, and creating jobs here, there is tremendous growth and development in our city and things look shiny and great. Um, and so for a number of people, it was a huge surprise that we would end up at the bottom of this list. Take a look at this map showing the economic segregation of Mecklenburg County. The darker the shade of green, the higher number of families living in poverty. And one of the key uh, facets that I've noticed in terms of the landscape of Charlotte uh, are the pockets of disenfranchisement or the pockets of uh, low income, low opportunity are all compressed fairly close to the urban core and what we see as a um, crescent of poverty. As Dr. Eric Friedman, a professor at Queen's University explains, the difference between the areas is like day and night. A second map shows the breakdown of race in Mecklenburg County. Again, you can see that crescent shape Dr. Friedman pointed out. That's also where a high concentration of minorities live. These maps show here in Charlotte, segregation runs deep, not just racial segregation, but also economic segregation. Mm -hmm. Typically, we, we do think about sort of a, a racial or ethnic divide, but we don't look at other uh, subtle divides that are about equal opportunities. What exactly is it in our community uh, that is holding some people back? Dio Dell serves as co-chair of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Opportunity Task Force. The group studies the characteristics of a community standing in the way of the American dream, including segregation, income inequality, school quality, social capital, and family structure. If you are born in one station in life, do you have the ability to change where you end up? Odell says the task force hopes to create a community where everyone can succeed by making recommendations officials can use to shape policy and coordinate resources to help families in need. The group hopes to release its findings at the end of the year. Until then, the task force continues its listening tour, inviting members of the community in underserved areas to share their concerns. We have to go and listen to those who are living uh, this experience, those who are in poverty, those who are in neighborhoods that are more challenged. We need to listen to their reality and, and to make sure that, that any recommendations that we make really reflect um, the thoughts of those people. Well, it feels good to know that there's this task force that's looking to try to figure out ways to help or to see what they can do to make things better. While the task force works to level the playing field for all families, Alexander focuses on her part of the equation, teaching her son the importance of hard work and a good education. 
One day at a time, she takes steps to break the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck, hoping to change her course so her life isn't dictated by the zip code in which she was born. For Carolina Impact, I'm Danielle Koser reporting. Thanks so much, Danielle. Now, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Opportunity Task Force wants to hear from you, and that's why they're holding a series of meetings. To find out when and where, look for the link posted with this story on the Carolina Impact page at pbscharlotte.org. Well, during